anytime you can get in front of the Minister of Finance and probably the second most powerful person in the government, uh, that's got to be a major uh, plus. Uh, I thought the meeting went extremely well. I've known Jim for a long time. He's a very straightforward, uh, straight shooter kind of guy. And um, his comments were measured, but he took the time to listen to what we had to say. He looked at the presentation, asked some very good questions, and gave us some very strong indications that uh, there would be something forthcoming in the budget. So we were quite encouraged and excited by that, and uh, we're looking forward to see what comes out in the next few weeks. It was an opportunity for us to focus on, again, on the impact of two storms that we uh, talked about, the beetle kill, obviously, and then the global economic situation. It was uh, nice that we heard from the minister, and as mentioned by Hugh, when he was here previously, he fully understands how the forest sector has been hit uh, by both of these uh, influences with the uh, pine beetle and still uh, the need uh, to focus on uh, programs that will help uh, create uh, employment and opportunities for those that have been impacted uh, by the downturn in the forest sector and the changes in the forest sector. For me, I guess the, the minister's interest in, the, uh, in some of the short-term type of uh, infrastructure investments that can really make a difference starting tomorrow and his knowledge of the north, really, it kind of impressed me. I think it just showed me that our local MPs are definitely doing their job lobbying for us in Ottawa because he was aware of the issues. And to be able to invest in some of the needed infrastructure on our local reserves, which will also have a strong impact on the neighboring communities around those reserves, was, uh, was really good on my, from my, my uh, perspective to see that because if we can get some of that needed infrastructure on our reserves, it's going to provide a much needed stimulus, I guess, to our construction and, and sawmilling industries to carry them over the short term. But beyond that, it's going to allow for us to bring a lot of our youth and our people back to our communities where they can then uh, hopefully take advantage of some of the job opportunities that are there. Well, firstly, I was equally impressed with uh, Mr. Flaherty's uh, uh, knowledge and interest in the North and, and the thought that they've already put forward around some of these uh, opportunities uh, uh, for their stimulus package. So that was very encouraging. And, and really, I was there uh, to validate and reinforce you know, the fact that, that, that BC North has had some tough times for quite a number of years we start a number of years ago with the softwood lumber agreement. You know, then the pine beetle came and, uh, and devastated our forests, and, and then the global uh, financial and uh, economic crisis has hit. So, um, you know, just explained what I was seeing through my eyes, through our customers and our communities, and uh, the resilience of our, our customers and our communities, and the, the great work we've done to sort of, um, you know, uh, diversify and get a lot of other things rolling with logistics and transportation, mining, oil and gas, and that you know we had great traction around those uh, areas, and then the uh, global financial crisis, economic crisis, sort of stalled everything. And you know just the importance of, of not losing that traction, and and really for the uh, federal government to play a big role in in supporting the projects that we were putting forward. You know with the recent forestry downturn and now with the global global problem and recession on, uh, there's a huge pent-up demand for technical retraining in, uh, through all our region. And uh, we have three colleges in the north, and uh, the College of New Caledonia has is got uh, Cornell, Burns Lake, Vanderhoof, Fort St. James, and Mackenzie as regional campuses. In there, we've, uh, to, to increase the seating, the number of, of training seats, we need infrastructure, money, funding for infrastructure and we need uh, for uh, to expand and renovate our facilities and all of these we could by doing that we could increase our, our, our throughput. You get the sense that you know from this you know consultation that when the budget comes out that in the budget there's going to be specific projects that say you know Prince George you know here's some funding for you know the 6.6 .6 kilometers you know connect, connector road or things like that or will it be more that there will be programs, you know, that you know that, that communities can can tap into the funds and will have to apply. I would expect you'll see a mixture of that. You'll see a mixture of specific projects that are shovel ready, as, it's, as the term goes, uh, together with programs that uh, that will move dollars out uh, for for targeted infrastructure. You know, there's two objectives. One is to get people working, 
uh, and then secondly, uh, to do so in a way that provides a long-term economic benefit. So the, you know, there, there, there are typically three thrusts when you're looking to enhance productivity or enhance uh, economic development prospects. One is in, in hard and soft infrastructure, so that's roads, broadband, uh, and the like. Uh, then there's education and research, so skills retraining, transitioning workers into new fields. Uh, is, is a key one, together with um, the research side of things. So we highlighted the bio, bioenergy uh, uh, innovation center that UNBC is looking at, um, and so so those are the those are the areas: education, research, and development, and infrastructure. And we we put forward things that are both shovel ready, but also uh, have a um, have a longer term stimulus effect for uh, the northern. 